ATW here. I want to do a video on a couple of Marlin rim fires. I've owned these for many years. This one here I bought brand new. This is a Marlin 880SQ. It's, uh, it's commonly known as the Squirrel. It was a rifle that Marlin brought out after the Model 2000 which was a target entry level target grade rifle. The very first ones that were made were actually 2000s restocked. And you can tell number one from the serial number, but number two, you can also tell because the very first ones were drilled and tapped for sights and had a dovetail for the rear sight. They also have an additional lug in the barrel for action screws. So on the regular 880, this trigger guard would just screw on here and here, and then the single point here for attaching the stock to the, to the action. This one here has a screw here and a screw here to attach the stock to the action. Now this stock is not what came with the gun. I've worked in the gun industry for many years and living in Connecticut, just a few miles from the Marlin factory of North Haven and a few miles from the New Haven factory as well um, when, it, when they were in New Haven. Um, I picked up this stock at Marlin, or my wife did actually, when I didn't like the plastic and they picked out a nice pretty stock for me and it's been on this rifle ever since. And it's been, you know, my squirrel rifle for many years. It's an absolutely great shooter. When I bought it and decided on it, I was working in a shop that we had a 100 yard indoor rifle range. We had seven or eight gun ranges there, but we had a 100 yard indoor rifle range. So I was able to shoot this indoors with every kind of ammunition that I could get my hands on and compare it directly to every other firearm that we had that I was able to shoot. I couldn't shoot the brand new ones, but everything that came in used, I could shoot. And at the time, I don't remember if I had it because I bought one back in the day too. This would have been 96. Um, Anon shoots, I don't remember the model. I wanna say it was a 14 something, but I don't remember for sure. I don't believe it was the 64 that you saw, 65, 54s. I think it was a 17, uh, 14 model. Anyway, whatever it was, it was a non-shoots. There was a Kimber. There was a Browning um, Bolt. There was a, an old Mossberg target rifle, and there was a Remington 513 that I know I compared this to along with a, a number of other rifles and across the board regardless of ammunition this was the most accurate rifle that I had that we shot that I shot on that range all with the same ammo you know no wind no weather conditions to worry about indoors uh, ultimate shoot 10 shots in the into the into the uh, backstop and then shoot 10 shots in the target um, cool no you know everything perfect to, to prove accuracy. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I even had a big scope that I had on the same same scope on all the guns so everything was equal. Again, I had time, so I did that. And then I bought the gun. So I really, really like it. It's been a favorite. And been shooting these challenges from Day at the Range. Uh, I think we've done three of them so far, and there's another one from Easter that I still need to shoot. We're still in April, so I still got time. Anyhow, I want to do some upgrades. And I figured I'd make a video on two of my favorites just to have it on the channel. Also to see where we're starting from. Now this came with a black plastic junky stock. I don't know why they ever put it on it, but they did. And uh, this made it a whole lot nicer of a gun with this walnut stock. But I've got a Boyd stock coming for this gun. 
because I feel the only thing that's holding this back from being really able to do some fine things is a better target design stock. Uh, I've got a, a good buddy that's got an MTR, actually two that have MTRs. They're different models. One is the wood stocked one with the long barrel and one is the fancy carbon fiber um, high dollar short barreled sponge painted CZ. Um, I think they're both 457s. I think. Anyway, they're both really good shooters. And uh, I got good glass on this a while back. This is a Ar Argos Athlon. This is an Athlon Argos. 8 to 32. So it's pretty good. I not in love with the reticle it's an older scope so it just has a mill dot reticle there's no no ranging no christmas tree um but it's fine literally fine so it's not covering up the target so i'm able to to see what i'm shooting at and it, and it works pretty good the uh the focus on it wanders a little bit meaning that with the recoil of the gun it, it changes not really a big deal i bought it used um, especially for the price I paid, I'm not complaining. So that's going to stay on there. I'm going to pillar bed the new stock and probably glass bed it. It's going to come cut for this gun, so it's going to become cut for the big heavy barrel. But I'm probably going to open it up more farther so that there's no chance of anything touching because I, I may machine it for a rail, a target rail, and then I can do some more things with it, depending on where I go with it. I'd like to shoot, possibly shoot some of the rimfire long range stuff. I know my buddy has been getting involved with it. So I may, I may want to do that. So that's where this is going. Um, I kind of hate to take this stock off it. Um, just sentimental reasons like I say I my wife got this for me on my request you know go go and get this but uh, you know and of course you know I I no longer have her with me so uh, there's some sentimental value with this stock but I'm not it's not going anywhere you know it can get put back on and uh, I'm just gonna upgrade it with this new Boyd stock. This one over here is sentimental because it was it represents the first 22 Magnum that I bought. Now it's not this gun. The gun was actually an 883 which is the next generation. This is an 8 series. These predated these were 7 series so the 783 780 rather was the rimfire version of this this is an 880 so the newer version this was a 90s gun and the 70s guns or later 60s 70s 60s guns were um the 7 series so the same over here so i bought an 883 which is 22 magnum bolt action but it had a tubular magazine and I really, at the time, I didn't dislike them. Today, I really much dislike tubular magazines because they they always seem to have another bullet in them. And inevitably, rimfires are shot by kids or using them to teach kids. And it's just a dangerous situation. I like a removal magazine. You take it out. You open the bolt. The gun's empty. There's no question. There's no if ands, or buts, anything. With a tubular magazine, you empty the magazine, you can pull the... the tube out and dump it out but there's always one hung up in there and if you don't a couple of times and even then sometimes you put the tube back in and all of a sudden it's got pressure on it and it'll feed a bullet it comes out of nowhere it's just i don't like it because of that so i like removable magazines in my rifles now this i should get some for this i haven't seen them but this is a flush fit 22 Magnum magazine, which just makes it a whole lot nicer looking. And one thing here that's also different about these two is the metal here is inlet into the wood. 
you know, it's flush. Where this one here, it's just stuck on top. Now, I always thought this was an older gun. When I bought it, this was my buddy's growing up. Um, my mom used to babysit for the neighbor's kid all the time. And uh, we grew up together. And, you know, I used to tease him, you know, you were you were the one poking me in the crib because he's a few years older than me. He was the one poking me in the crib when we were little kids. Anyway, this was his rifle and I bought it from him. He wanted a stainless steel 17. So we worked out a deal and uh, I bought this from him and he bought the, the stainless steel 17 SS something or other, 17 HMR. Same exact gun, heavier barrel, stainless steel different caliber but it looked identical to this he refinished this stock and it comes out pretty good it's a pretty nice stock it's pretty it's not quite as nice as this it's a little bit redder but it's still walnut it's got impress checkering instead of machine cut checkering um impressed down here as well but it's a really nice it's a really nice stock it's a, a really nice um stock really nice feel same pretty much dimensions um i contemplated putting this stock on this one but this this is nice like this i don't really need to change it this is a little bit lighter contour barrel they're both the same length 22 inches i believe um this one here where wears a hawk vantage 4 to 12 22 magnum scope the, the reticle inside is designed with BDC drops, 422 Magnum. It's a really nice stock. It's a de uh, scope, identical scope to what's on the A22, the uh, the one that wouldn't feed there and that I fixed the magazine for and found all the problems. Same exact scope. Awesome, awesome scopes. I really, really, really like them. Um, I just wish they were 30 millimeter, but other than that, I love the scopes. So I'm going to be taking them both to the range a little bit more. I want to ring it out a little bit. I may, I may do some bedding work on this because I think I can eke out a little better accuracy. Um, I don't know what's going on. I can feel a little bit of movement in the action in the stock. So I know the screws are tight, but these weren't bedded great. There's only one screw in this one. So it kind of can hinge in the middle. So bedding can be a real help here and I'm, I'm also probably going to pillar bed it because this right now is just squeezing the wood and that's never great so I may do that as well but we'll see at least I'm going to bed it because when I get the new stock in this I'm probably going to do the same pillar and glass bed it but the action not the barrel. I'm probably going to free float the barrel on this one. This one here, I don't know. We'll see. This one here, I may glass bed the action, uh, the barrel and the action, you know, a little bit. Should give it a good, a good foundation and be a little bit better accuracy wise. These are both micro group barrels. They both have shot pretty good and the potential is there for pretty good shooters. So there we go. I just wanted to talk a little bit about these and uh you know, we're 15 minutes in or so 13 minutes in and that's about it um, i'm going to take these out on a range i'm going to be shooting this head to head against that 64 um they're comparable optics i've got the my 10 to 40 on that on shoots and this is an 8 to 32 8 to 32 yeah on here so pretty comparable and uh we'll see what how they do now this this has got a rifle basics i think it's rifle basics trigger system in it which i'm shocked i i, I looked them up the other day um thinking of maybe i'll upgrade the trigger and then i when i went and looked at it i realized that i had already upgraded the trigger in this years ago um rifle basics rifle basics anyway uh, I already upgraded it. So uh, it's like 100 bean sprouts. 
and you don't you don't get much for 100 bean sprouts i don't think i want to invest it in this it's this trigger is is still you know stupid cheap style rimfire trigger but it's pretty good this one here is exceptional if if anything it's a little bit on the heavy side i mean on the uh on the light side if you close this bolt fast sometimes it'll follow it's never fired on me but it will follow i've banged on it and everything and it it doesn't it doesn't release when it's cocked but if you if you run through the bolt real fast it'll follow it doesn't fire it just follows so it does it doesn't cock but it's very light and i think there's adjustment in there but i'm not certain i gotta check on that but uh it's a it's a really nice trigger but it's a target gun it's not i'm not going to squirrel hunt with this it's not going to be in the woods this is only ever going to be a target gun which is why i'm willing to restock it for a nicer stock because uh my 17 Mach 2 has become my squirrel gun for the past 20 years. And uh, it's it's just a, it's a better squirrel rifle. All right, this is the two Marlins I just wanted to show you. They're both, everybody gets hung up on this. JM, yeah, they're both JMs. So what? It's just a proof mark. Where is it? There it is right there on the barrel, in front of the serial number. Don't get hung up on that. Just uh it's just a proof mark from the manufacturer dates when they were when they were proofed. So they're both older Marlins, 96 and 76. I checked the date on this one. I was thinking it was older, but it's 1976. And if you need to know, the last the first two digits of the serial number you subtract that those two digits from 2000 and it gives you your your date so 76 78 I'm sorry 78 my addition's bad 2 is 8 so 78 and 96 and this one is 04 but this I knew because it's the first production year for this rifle you can tell because of the dovetail and the drilled and tapped. It also has a match chamber, which the later models did not have. So it's got drilled and tapped for open sights, match chamber, and the extra lug for the action attaching to the stock. There we go. All right. I hope it was informative. I hope it wasn't too boring. God bless everybody. CW out.